Moya promises to take us on a mystical and soulful journey aimed at healing the nation. And it's being driven by creative songwriter and social activist Simpiwe Dana, who joins us now. Simpiwe, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure and a privilege to be in conversation with you. You know, we've had a pretty tough time this week in South Africa. We've had the grey listing. We've had the political oh announcements. We always have ESCOM. We have GBV. You know, South Africa is this, this cocktail of, of, of challenges that really yeah. breaks you down, even at a cellular and a cellular it's, level. It's heartbreaking yeah. to see the country crumble the way it is. It's really heartbreaking. We've all gone back to our cocoons because there's really nothing to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you, when you promise to take us on, on a, a journey of spiritual intimacy, that sounds like an opportunity, but it also sounds so scary. Um, well, I think most of us go to that place when everything is falling apart, you know, we need solace. And then once we get there, we just want to stay there because it's such a peaceful and calm place and you feel steady on your feet. This emanated uh, in the aftermath of your mom's passing, which was such a tender and raw moment for you. Mm. You've had the opportunity to do the first one where I imagine those emotions were quite raw and you felt quite vulnerable. What has changed in you in the second iteration of Moya? Um, last year's Moya had the effect of making me realize that I was not the only one who was needing to be spiritually vulnerable or just to be vulnerable. Um, the response to last year's Moya was quite overwhelming, um, almost like it was something that was needed um, by the nation. And when I had created it, it was for my own healing. Um, having lost my anchor, you know, feeling directionless after losing my mom, because my mom was my home. Um, so I was quite vulnerable and needed a steady place and needed to feel held and that everything was okay. So I went on this journey because what I do, um, I write from emotion. I don't just go to studio and write, something compels me and it usually is emotion, in fact all the time it's emotion and usually it's a, it's, it's a, it's a way of purging what I'm feeling, like emptying out maybe the past five years experiences or what I'm currently experiencing right now. So I felt compelled then to go and write about my pain in studio and it culminated in this production. It's so beautifully put. Um, to be able to go there, though, takes huge levels of trust in the process, huge levels of trust in yourself to be able to be that vessel of containment so that you can create something that's really beautiful and more importantly makes a connection with other people. You managed to do that very successfully the first time around. Uh, you've also partnered with uh, you know, renowned uh, performers, Mangoba, Makoma, yes. Makoma, uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, and Makoma. Didi Luzipo as well. And it is in the pursuit of merging different sort of art forms to create something powerful. Just talk to us about the sumptuous feast that awaits audiences. Well, um, the directors, the music director, the creative director, you know, it, it almost like it was meant to be that we work together because we just pulled something off that was, I believe, like we, we, it was close to all of our hearts, you know, the, the theme you know, like the root of, of, the, of, of the show itself. And um, we have a lot of a cappella because what we did is that we visited um, some of my songs when I wrote them because I write a cappella uh, most of the time. So we went to the originals, you know, and we explored them, rearranged them, and then took the new music that I did as well um, in the aftermath of my mom's passing. And most of it is also a cappella. Um, and I think like what we created with the work is a, is a healing circle, right? Um, because during COVID, there was so much pain and loss, you know, um, we were overwhelmed, you know, and we got to a point where we felt numb and also felt guilty of putting that pain on someone else who's also feeling pain. So we were in isolation in our pain, right? So now it's a space, to, it's, a, it's a safe space to to release, release that pain. You know, some people keep things like that very closely contained because after the dam bursts, yeah. then 
then what, you know, what happens afterwards? And there's a great deal of fear of the unknown, of being spiritually or emotionally vulnerable. How do you bring people, once that opening has happened, back to a sense of, of completion and containment from the position of strength? I don't think I have to in that regard. Um, I open myself up emotionally, allow myself to be vulnerable, and yet I'm contained, right? So it feels safe for them to open up, and when they go home, they've emptied themselves out out of that anxiety, out of those all conflicting emotions, I, I, I give a space where they're allowed to feel, however way they are feeling. Yeah. You know what's really, again, such a powerful thing is this merging, because it is entertainment too. Um, it is about giving people a place to, yeah. to feel differently and, and in, a, in a way to also celebrate things like resilience. And mm -hmm. I know people hate the word in South Africa now, resilient, because we have been resilient no, for tired. 300 years in <laughs> South Africa, you know. But to take the most positive attributes of, those, of that point around resilience is to say that we have the capacity to transcend. It doesn't mean that we have to ignore the injustice or not fix the dysfunction, but we can transcend and we can prevail. So that, that mix of that consciousness raising, but also entertaining people and making them feel really great. I mean, that's a special magic. And Simpiwe, you have been perfecting that for so many years in our country and in your own journey. Definitely. Um, I'm honest when I write. I, I write from a, an honest place. And that's why I take time between projects because I, I first have to, you know, with the last album, I've emptied myself out. Now I have to experience new things. Mm. And then when, when, when the emotion gets to that level, then I empty myself again. So it's the honesty. Um, I don't follow trends. And I call myself a keeper of the times because I observe society. You know, that's wh one of the reasons why I have such hot takes about what's going on. <laughs> because we, I yeah. literally, I observe society <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, okay, something has shifted. I'm yeah. one of the first people to see those kinds of shifts um, even before um, anyone else sees them. And, and that's the job of artists, you know, yeah. to, to, to look after society. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is to kind of penetrate, you know, the vein and, yes. and, and feel where that life force is going and how mm -hmm. it's moving. Really, really powerful. What, you know, I suppose it's an unfair question to ask what's next, because in the same way that Moya was born out of your mom's passing, which you could not have predicted, you are the recipient of, of gifts and, and, and dreams and, and, and themes as situations happen but is there what, what are some of the things that we we might be expecting in terms of the way this art is evolving and very also conscious of the concept of artivism which you may not have called it that label but it's what you have been yeah. doing for many years about raising awareness and consciousness and using art as the as the instrument to do that well i i want to take moya to the world um, i i think there's just a, a need for this kind of of, of art these kinds of projects, you know, I, I want this project like to rival Lion King. Lion King has been around <laughs> hey. forever. You know, it's time for something new from the continent. And so, why shouldn't it? Yes, exactly. You know, like this is a world class um, project. Yeah. Very finely yes, produced, yes. very high production values. Yes. It's going to be mind blowing and a treat, a journey inside and outside for the audiences and for yourselves. How are people? getting in touch with um, the dates and, and all the information. I know we've got it on our screen, 3rd yes. to the 8th of March, so mm -hmm. that's next week. Yes, that's um, next weekend from Friday till Sunday. Um, the tickets, you can find them at um, joburgtheatre.com or at webtickets.co.za. You can just follow me on social media, on Instagram, on Twitter, on my Facebook yeah. to find out all, um, all of that information, but yes. Wonderful. Simpiwe Dana, thank you for coming to our studio, looking gorgeous, darling, thank and you. spending time with us. <laughs> really appreciate you. Good luck. Thank we'll you. be thank watching so this new production. Creative songwriter, social activist, a woman who needs no introduction, Simpiwe Dana.